Will there be pets what in heaven? Are, are we in the end times? Uh, what are current beliefs like most new and accurate God God been and since and how uh, grow in this Jesus area. proclaimed it. Hello, and welcome back to Now That'll Preach. My name is Jared Crowley. I'm your host, and I'm sitting across from Pastor David Freck, lead pastor of Church of the Harvest. Mm -hmm. And uh, That'll Preach basically is a resource uh, that we put on here um, intended to help you grow in your relationship with God by, uh, you know, asking us any kind of questions or topics or anything that you mm -hmm. just kind of want some some insight from Pastor David on. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the trick is, and the thing that kind of makes it a little interesting is that uh, we don't give him any preparation whatsoever or right. tell him in advance what the questions are going to be or, you know, hey, maybe read up on Exodus a little bit before right. this week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> None of that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's obviously really interesting. It's really cool to see, you know, you just have things clocked on and watch the gears turn and things like that and yeah. You know. Well, we've been doing this one almost two years or maybe a little? I think a year. Oh, it's yeah. Maybe more. I well, think a little over a year. Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> I, we've only, I've only nixed one. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what I was telling, because I think we're close, to, I don't know if this is true or not, I feel like we're close to 50 episodes and uh, I was telling someone that the other day, I was like, one out of 50, it's not bad. Well, 50 <laughs> times 12 is what? Yeah, right. That's over two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so this week's question, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's We've talked about false prophets before, um, but somebody wanted kind of a deeper dive on, uh, they mentioned Exodus 7 and Exodus 8, which is where um, men sent out from Pharaoh start doing some of the same things that, some of the same miracles that Moses was oh, performing. Oh, like the rod and mm -hmm. the um, yeah. serpents. Yeah. yeah, and the frogs in Exodus 8. And so they were wondering how demonic forces can produce the same miracles that God can? Uh, well, they're not the same miracles. Mm. Um, they're usually miracles of deception. Mm. Uh, to say that there is no supernatural power in the demonic realm would be untrue. Mm. There is supernatural power, um, but it usually is based on the powers of deception. Okay. So, so uh, if we want to illustrate the rods turning into snakes... They, uh, the Egy ancient Egyptians had, uh, now this is uh, found to be factual, okay. historically factual, yeah. that they were able to somehow either hypnotize or do something with snakes that made them stiff. Mm. And then when they would lay them down, they could do something where they would kind of like then start moving. Sure. Uh, but that doesn't preclude there, there wasn't a supernatural nature mm -hmm. to them. Um, the enemy can only duplicate or imitate. Yeah. And I mean, maybe duplicate's not the right word, but imitate. Mm -hmm. So the, the, he can't come up with, he, he will pervert, distort. Mm -hmm. He will take what is God does and then do his own version of it. Right. But he doesn't have the creative power to create something independent of what he's already seen yeah. or what he already knows. So I think the question was, how does, how does the enemy give basically the same kind of miracles. Yeah. And and I, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, uh, we can presume a few things scripturally. Among them is deception, imitation. Um, is there some supernatural capability? There is. Um, you know, we think about Samuel appearing in a ghost-like form mm -hmm. when the witch of Endor, you know, was with Saul and, and he wanted to see Samuel again and get some advice. And then that... that ghost-like being then rebuked Saul. <laughs> mm. Anyhow, so even, even, even though the devil might be able to do things, God can still ultimately uh, kind of has the last, kind of sure. the last word. And he doesn't always, but, yeah. he, he, but he does have that. Yeah. So um, I'd say deception, imitation, um, thinking about other examples or ways that the devil does that or can mm -hmm. do that. Um, uh, illusion, distortion, concealment, um, darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, the demonic world requires faith just like God's world mm -hmm. requires faith. Okay. Um, so I, I've been to, you know, I've been to Africa dozens of times. Sure. Yeah. Uh, been to very remote places where witchcraft is the dominant, you know, there's a witch doctor, yeah. and, you know, and, and he controls 
that community. Sure. And, yeah. and if he comes by and he throws a curse, it's a real deal. Mm. It's not a, it's not a boogeyman thing. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a real deal. Mm. And the community absolutely believes it. Mm. And that faith helps support the demonic yeah. realm yeah. and activate demonic things. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if I can get you to believe it, yeah, for sure. Then, then it become the, the, you can become more convinced of the evidences mm-hmm. and it creates an environment for demonic things to happen. Yeah. So once again, uh, faith is a component. Yeah. So the enemy is going to work hard to get you to believe that this can happen or is happening sure. or will happen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the case of Job, that which I feared has come upon me. It's mm. this idea that fear becomes, which is another platform for the demonic realm. Yeah. Works off of fear and darkness. So I want to put I want to put people, I want to stage them with fear so that they'll become convinced of my supernatural mm. nature. So fear will magnify the reality of what's being, what's being seen. Yeah, sure. And, um, and so all of those, all of those factors, yeah. all of those elements are elements that the enemy will exploit mm-hmm. and that the enemy will use to, um, to bring forth those uh, kinds of miraculous gifts. Yeah. And there is a supernatural, once again, there is a supernatural nature to them. And sometimes there is a power, a demonic power that is at work. Sure. Uh, it can't be creative, but it can work through deceptions and manipulations. Yeah. yeah. So um, remember that God's, you know, snake mm-hmm. ate their snakes. Yeah. And that those frogs uh, just added to what God was doing. Yeah, sure. So they became more a part of the plague. Mm. So at first it was about, yeah, your God against our God. And, it, and if you read the story of Exodus, and I'm going back to there, and I'm kind sure. of hopping around a yeah, little yeah. bit. But if you read the story of Exodus, <clears throat> one of the things that's really super interesting is that when God tells Moses, I'm sending you back to deliver my people, mm-hmm. he clearly communicates that is about that this whole event is to demonstrate that God is the God of all gods, mm. that, that uh, it is a spiritual battle, yeah. and he is going to prove that, his God, that he, the God of the heaven and earth, the God of the Jews, is greater than the gods of the most powerful nation in the world sure. at the time. Yeah. And so it, it is absolutely a spiritual mm. battle. Yeah. And so everything Moses is doing for early on, mm-hmm. right, they're trying to mirror or mimic. Yeah. Now remember, they couldn't create it right. outside of him demonstrating it. Right. right. And so at first, that's why Pharaoh was unimpressed. Yeah. Well, my guys can do this too, so right. it's no big deal. Right. But but then those guys were like, we can't replicate that. We can't replicate yeah, that. Sure. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't. And then the person they're advising him, you know, yeah. he's really the, he, the, the Moses' God is. God. Yeah. Right. And so, right. you know, yeah. Maybe you ought to listen to him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. But right. it was it was before they could be naturally released, there had to be a diminishing and a unmasking mm. of the falsity sure. of those Egyptian gods. Yeah. Yeah. That was critical. And I think that's true today. For sure. Because yeah. the old testament is a type and shadow. It's mm. true today that that Oftentimes, we have to break through the spiritual bondages that exist with people before we can enter into our own liberty yeah, yeah. or bring them into freedom. Yeah. And, and so the Lord, much of what happens, that's why prayer is so important. That's why intercession is so important. That's why the Word of God is so important. That's why we got to keep preaching, got to keep praying, got to keep reaching. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to do those things because yeah. people, we have to break the spiritual environment. We have to break the controls that the enemy has. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, uh, I think it's Ephesians again, where it says Ephesians chapter two it might be Ephesians four, but I think it's Ephesians two mm-hmm. where he says that, um, God wants to manifest his wisdom to the principalities and powers in the heavenly yeah. places. So it's like, okay, God's going to show that he's greater, wiser, yeah. stronger. Right. And he wants to demonstrate it to those powers. Mm. So that then their ability, Corinthians talks about how he's blinded the minds of those who would receive the gospel. Yeah. So the enemy's at work to deceive, deceive, keep cloaked, 
keep in denial sure. what God wants to bring in. Yeah. And, and if he can keep you believing his lies, then it'll keep you from believing God's truth. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why that spiritual warfare is always taking place, and we have to understand yeah. its, its role right. in our kingdom advancement in the earth. Yeah, you know? yeah. Super yeah. important. So yeah. I hope, hopefully I've answered the yeah, question. Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, I think, like you said at the beginning, it's like there's no way to really answer, like, how, you know, yeah. I, how I'm they not, can do it. Yeah, I've never lived on that side of it. Right, right. Uh, I know that the, I know people have. Yeah. yeah. And they, they talk about, you know, real supernatural powers. Yeah. And, you know, you know, prophetic things that, you know, people can say and demonic, yeah. under demonic anointing and, you know, and insights and seeing things mm-hmm. and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so it does exist. I, yeah. I'm, I'm not precluding that it doesn't exist, but it, it works within these realms. Yeah. Yeah. And if you understand that it works within certain realms mm-hmm. and under certain principles, then then that's that's a part of breaking yeah, breaking free for sure for and, sure uh, having victory over it. Yeah. Well, I think even just the, I mean, it's so cool. Like you said, my mind went there too when you were talking about how the Old Testament is like a, a mirror of things that are going on. You know what I mean? And like kind of human truths that are just always happening. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really cool to see like the way that the enemy and like demonic forces respond to like an assault from God or respond to God glorifying himself is Mm -hmm. replication and they can't even do it that well. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. Even if they can do it, even if they can kind of pull it off, they can't pull it off in the same way or to the same degree or the same effect that, that God does. So, um, you know, it's just, these are real, these are real things. Years ago, there was a song that, um, Carmen sang. Now, okay. I mean, this is going way back. That <laughs> Carmen sang, where and it was a super famous song. I wish I could remember the exact name of it, but it it, it talks about this battle between a preacher and this witch, or uh-huh. this, and how they were having this battle. Sure. And that was a true story. Uh, Carmen was was talking about because he had heard, had seen the testimony of it through a preacher friend of his. Okay. So he actually wrote this song yeah. in relationship to it. And ultimately he said, all you can do is fake this, but this, I've got the real power of God. Yeah. And it was all about intimidation. It was mm. all about, you know, brooding intimidation. And, and the preacher, because he refused to be intimidated, ultimately overcame yeah. and brought the victory. And sure. God's name was glorified. Yeah. It and by, yeah. You know, demonic strongholds lost their hold. Yeah. But the enemy's going to fight for it. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But it's such an important thing to keep in mind that like Yeah, yeah. and in our world, especially, you know, North America, America in it itself, you know, we kinda we leave that to TVs and movies mm-hmm. and we don't we don't really sure. embrace the reality that it is yep. in the spiritual realm. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, and oh yeah, that belongs in Africa or mm-hmm. parts of the jungle or right, you know, right. Yeah, yeah, South yeah. America or whatever. Right. Uh, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the devil is everywhere. Yeah. His power is everywhere. Sure. His deceptions are everywhere. And just because it's wearing a suit and tie and driving a, a BMW <laughs> doesn't mean it ain't the real yeah, thing. Yeah, for it's sure. It's not the real thing. Yeah. So uh, it's a little more overt, whereas in our nation it's more covert. Sure. But I think it's happening in broad daylight. We just refuse to ex- we refuse to accept it yeah. or believe it or acknowledge it. Right, right. And that, that, that means he... He does what he does in broad daylight. Yeah. And the other factor of talking about deception is what Corinthians says when it says how Satan himself can array himself as an angel of light. In other words, he doesn't come with, you know, a pitchfork and horns. Mm-hmm. He he comes arrayed in deception. Yeah. He, he looks like it's yep. all good and yep. it's all right and it's you know nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're compelled and bound. Yeah, for you know, sure. And, for well, how sure. did this happen? And, yeah. And that's the enemy's nature, yeah. right? That's the enemy's nature. Yeah, so definitely. Uh, it's important to have discernment. It's, hard, it's important to be prayed up. It's important to be in the word. Yeah. All of those things. Nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Because we <clears throat> we have greater power. But right. uh, it's also nothing to play around with. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That balance is super key. And just, yeah, like you said, understanding that like you're all good. There's nothing to be afraid of as long as you're, you know, close to God's heart. Like you're gonna be I all right. Tell but. you some stories. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. Sure, sure. <laughs> all right. Well, super appreciate you, man. Appreciate your perspective. Yeah. I know that was kind of a 
an interesting question. I wanted to just yeah. kind of throw it at you and see like, you know, where, what your mind would think of, because it wasn't a super direct question that you could answer in a direct way. But, Hopefully uh, it was helpful. Yeah, for yeah. sure, man, for sure. <laughs> All right, we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Um, like I said, we view it as a resource, so liking, sharing, subscribing, all those things that help get it around. Uh, we'd really appreciate that, but uh, we will see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>